coming up on Asian Focus, we meet an amazing concert pianist, Blind Since Birth, and later best-selling author Samuel Shem talks about his latest novel. But first, an exciting new lecture series launches at the Joslin Diabetes Center. I'm Mary Sitt. Join me next on Asian Focus. Fifteen years ago, the Charleston Diabetes Center founded the first in the nation Asian American Diabetes Initiative to raise awareness of diabetes in the Asian American community. Now the Charleston Center has just launched an exciting new lecture series to bring the best and the brightest experts to Boston. Leverett Wing, a member of the Board of Overseers at the Charleston Diabetes Center, is here to tell us more. He's also the Executive Director of the Commonwealth Seminar. Thank you so much, Leverett, for being with us. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Mary. Thank you. Uh, tell me about this new lecture series. Why did you start something like this? Well, my parents and I have been very active with Joslin for um, nearly 20 years. My dad was a trustee there. I'm an overseer there now. Um, our family, it's been a, it's a very personal, uh, personal uh, story for us. My dad uh, suffered with diabetes for nearly 40 years. My mom tells a story that if it wasn't for Joslin, um, he was diagnosed with diabetes when I was three, and if it wasn't for Joslyn, uh, she'd have been a single parent before I was 10 years old. So they helped uh, treat, manage, yep. educate, all of that. Yep, and, and with, with Joslyn's, uh, with Joslyn's uh, medical advice and mom's diligent care, because dad was one to kind of sneak off of his <laughs> right, diet of here course, and there. Of candy. Uh, exactly, <laughs> ice chocolate. cream. I'll, I'll right, tell you a story right. off camera about him two-fisting ice cream cones <laughs> and mom getting just, just, just going ballistic. Um, so with, with with, with her help and, and, and Joslyn's uh, medical medical instruction, he was able to, to live um, a, a very full and, and healthy life. Now you brought a picture of your parents. Let's take yes. a look at, at this picture. Yes. And the, the lecture series is named after them, right? Yes, it is. The Lawrence and Evelyn Wing uh, Lectureship Series. And, and they were very involved in the center, too. He's, your dad was also on the board of the Joslin yep. Center, as you are now, yep. right? He was a trustee for probably about 20 years. And this is a picture of the very first lecture you had. Tell me about this now. Well, so it took five years in the making to get all the yes, funding together, it right? Was, uh, I think you had me on a few years ago when I was doing my just, fundraising. Right. And I, was, I, I had threatened like, to shave my head. You were going to shave your head to raise money. And That's did you have right. to shave your head? No. no. <laughs> I had, I, thankfully, my female friends stopped me from doing that. So they, we, started they, a, they, no, we started a shave my head versus save my hair oh. fun. And so it, it was funny because it fell along gender lines. They, my guy friends were like, yeah, do it. That's awesome. And my female <laughs> friends, including my wife, were like, please don't. Please don't. And so thankfully, the save my hair won by one hundred and twenty-five dollars. That's so how by, much your hair's worth. Exactly by by a follicle. I would, I, I a would follicle. say exactly. So. so tell me, who are the people? Who are the experts speaking in this lecture series? Who was the first one you had? Well, it was Dr. Araneta from uh, from from U uh, University of uh, San Diego, mm -hmm. California, mm -hmm. and she came uh, to talk about her, her lecture was called "The Skinny: Getting the Skinny on Diabetes." Okay. And it's a play on words because. Um, Asian Americans, compared to other other ethnic populations, are predisposed to diabetes even when they're at a lower weight. That's not good news. No, it's not. I, I, I am, you, looking at the two of us, we're both, you know, we're both thin. Right. But you are. Well, you, you, so are you. <laughs> so thank you. But but we're Sometimes. we're both thin, and but we are we have a much uh, lower threshold right. to develop diabetes or even pre-diabetes. Uh, um, the body mass index, that's a, a right. ratio of, 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 of weight to, to height. Um, for uh, Caucasians, the, uh, their, their threshold is 24.9. Mm -hmm. um, for Asian Americans, ours is 22.9. So we, we have a lower threshold to reach, to reach the potential so diabetes. What can Asian Americans do to prevent diabetes? Well, first and foremost, uh, get, get, uh, get assessed. Go to your doctor, get your blood uh, level taken, blood, mm -hmm. blood glucose level taken. Uh, the other is exercise, and, th and this is just for, for basic basic health uh, right. health and wellness. Um, just get your uh, stay active, mm -hmm. um, exercise, don't smoke. Right. Um, just the basic. Uh, you know, watch your diet. Uh, uh, you know, say, uh, keep uh, sort of the vegetables and vegetables, Whole fruits, grains not and yeah, and not not too many fats, okay. not too many fats. 
So you don't have to cut out your sweets and the dark chocolate, do you? Well, no. The, well, dark chocolate, they say, for, for in small amounts, is actually supposed to be good. Yeah. I think there's a threshold of 70, 71% cocoa. But, but you so. know, if, if we, as Asian Americans, yes. are more susceptible to diabetes, do we have to cut out stuff that we that would normally not be harmful to the general population if they're pre if they're not even diabetic? There's nothing, you know. I think a lot of starches. I mean, we are we yeah. uh, uh, the basis of our diet is is rice. rice. And it, yeah. uh, again, it depends on the type of rice that you're eating. If it's brown rice, that it, it, then it's healthier. But uh -huh. if it's white rice, it, it's had a lot of the nutrients kind of washed out, and so it's just you know just plain white rice yep. and it's, it's ba it, I don't want to call it sugar but it's the it, yeah. starches are the building blocks it's, of sugar. It's not as, it's not as healthy as the exactly. whole wheat, whole grain. Tell me about the, the more about the series. Who's next on your series? And do you have somebody once a year come? Yes, okay. it'll be once a year. Uh, Dr. Araneta was, was such a, a big success. I don't know if you put the, the photo up of, of her lectureship. We probably, we had uh, about 150 to 200 people that. in mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. uh, in the auditorium. It was funny because when we launched this, I was thinking, you know, we'll have, okay, 30, 35 people It'll be small, and then Not I walked that in. Fundraising. Yeah, oh, and then, follicles. <laughs> exactly. and then, and here it is. then, we, then I walked good... into the room, uh -huh. and there was this room full of uh, 200 people. Well. I'm thinking we're never going to fill this, <laughs> and then we filled it, and it was it was really exciting, and I, I was so grateful. We had my, uh, f uh, friends and family come in, folks from the community. Is it the same time every year now that you're going to have it? Uh, probably annual around thing? the same time. Which is when? Uh, well, we had it on, on March 1st, okay. and so we'll probably so have probably it in, in the March. spring. Um, and all the talks we said on. Diabetes, the latest research, is that right? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, her her discussion was called the, the skinny, skinny on right. diabetes, and it was based on research done in the Filipino community. There's, okay. there's such a dearth of information about the Asian American right. community and diabetes right. that when you were able to get some, that a, a doctor like this comes around and is able to synthesize all that data and gen, just explain it in a way where somebody like even I could understand. Now, Leverett, if someone can't make it to the lecture, can are you going to post this online on the website? I think it is actually up on the website, oh, on great. Johnson's website. If, and if, I, I think, by the time the show airs, it definitely will be it will be up on the website. So people who um, are not around can find out the latest research on yes. the Asian population yes. and studies done on that population, and right? actually, which is really important. That's I mean, Jocelyn's website for the Asian American Diabetes Initiative is fantastic. It's mm -hmm. in English, it's in Chinese, it's in Japanese. They have uh, your own BMI. You can you can measure your own BMI. Oh, that's great. Uh, they also have something uh, where you can. Uh, they used to call it the walk, where you can put food into a, oh, a makeshift walk. walk. Exactly, right. uh -huh. Uh -huh. and and I can't remember what it's called now. But you can you can make your own dishes, and they'll they'll tell you the nutritional value, the the really? the, the amount of it's sugar in it, website? calories. Yep, and and you can kind of. Back then, it, the, the walk would make a sizzling sound. I don't right, know if it does right. it anymore. But it, it, they have such su uh, such amazing resources on that on, on the website. I encourage anybody to go. How to it. big is diabetes among the Asian American population? I mean, is it pretty? The big? estimate is 20 percent of the Asian American population in the United States. Uh, suffers from diabetes compared to only about 14.5 percent in the Caucasian community. Again, our threshold and our, right. our margin for error is is much lower. Right. Um, and they did a research. They did a research study in New York City, um, and it turned out that uh, nearly 50 percent, 48.5 percent of Asian Americans in New York City either have diabetes or uh, pre-diabetes. Pre -diabetic. Yep. Okay, we're going to check out your website, learn about it, yep. and start living healthily. Yeah. Thank you so much, Leverett, right. for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. Coming up next, the concert pianist Eugene No, blind since birth, who took up the piano at the age of 14. Stay with us.